friend and psychic medium. Yeah. And Janine, you're ready for the astrology we're doing today? I'm all ready with my charts. Let's go. Good. So have you got your cup of tea there? Got my cup of tea. And so I had a normal I... cup of tea today to sort Two. of wake me up a little bit. What about you? Two. I've got English breakfast because I thought it was fitting. So today we're going to oh. talk about England. England, okay. yes. Motherland. And we're going to do a little bit about Boris. Is that right? The yep. minister. Um, and you were saying that you can't get his birth time correct. Yeah, I'm not really happy with his birth time. I don't believe he's liberalising because 2pm is a little bit general for me. So we'll forget the whole chart. But I do want to have a look at just a little bit of his chart that's, okay. in, you know, important with the whole Brexit thing. Okay. And the great news is you're going to have a really bigger in-depth look at Brexit and England today today i am i am from an australian perspective oh which doesn't happen very often oh no, so that'd be fantastic and what i'm going to do today is have a look at boris's photo okay okay all right so um shall i start do you think or you want to start with boris yeah all right off you go okay cool um when i look at boris's photo what I get about him is that I do feel that despite what people think, um, that he does have some intelligence there. <laughs> and I know that's a funny thing to say because he's Prime Minister of the UK, but he's always put out as a buffoon, I think. Mm. But I, I feel there's more intelligence there than he's portraying publicly. And I also feel with Boris that... Um, that there is also a very caring soft side to him. I do feel that privately he's probably more uh, caring than um, he's talked about publicly. Would you think that would be correct? Yeah. Jimmy? He has a moon Pisces, so he's oh, actually a bit softy underneath. Okay, so that's what I'm picking up. And I also feel that he's got a sense of humour. So I feel like behind the scenes uh, with private people, his friends and family, he probably has a little bit of a sense of humour there and he's probably quite a delightful dinner guest, I would think. Mm -hmm. So that would be his private life. Um, I do feel that um, he gets wounded pretty easily without us knowing about what's said about him even though he brushes it off publicly. He may drink a little bit too much as well to get through it. And I do feel that... Um, and I do feel his heart's in the right place. I do feel his heart's in the right place for England. Wow. So even though I don't know whether he... He's not going to be seen, I think, in history as the best prime minister we, we've ever had in England. But I, I do feel that he's not as bad as what people think. That's what I think. And um, what I think he doesn't have is a really good astute insight into the people that surround him. So I think sometimes he picks people for the wrong reason to advise him or he... Um, listens to the wrong people sometimes and goes yeah. against his own gut feel on things and I think that's when he goes wrong he's all he can also he's a bit spoiled right he comes from blue blood and I, and I know he's a pretty sport man but and that can get in the way so his ego can get in the way from time to time but generally speaking I do believe he's going to write a book about his time in parliament when he leaves I do believe he will do that because they're showing me him writing a book. So I do believe that will come. Um, as far as him, um, I, I don't know whether he'll retire while he's in office. I'm not sure about that. Maybe you can say a bit more about that. But I do feel that there will be a point in his leadership where he's had enough, mm. right? And he'll just go, thanks, but no thanks. I don't want to do this anymore. And I feel it's connected to his new family. 
Hmm. Baby and the and the door um the daughter. His wife, I meant. Oh <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> um does he have what well, does he have a new baby? I, I wonder yeah, he had a new that. baby. Ah, okay. I think it was born when he was sick with COVID. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, he's been through a bit. Um and being sick with COVID like he was, and he was very seriously ill, um, I feel like that has also changed his priorities. So I think he will calm down, be a bit more serious, be a bit more responsible. And, but I do feel he'll want to withdraw from the position. Um, well, that's something I never considered, Jennifer, that he would withdraw during office. Do you think you had a long office? Well, I don't know what, it would be probably near the end or he may not stand again. Hmm. You know, when the, when the elections come around, whenever that is in the UK, he may not, he may retire or he may leave or not put his hand up again for that position. Hmm. I just hmm. feel there's a, there's, since he's been sick, there's been a shift or a change within, within him. Hmm. Sickness and fatherhood, hey? Hmm. Big changes, aren't they? Mm. Gives you a fright. Yeah, uh, yeah. That ill because he was seriously ill. Do like, you think he wanted to be Prime Minister of England for some time, or do you think that was relatively spontaneous? Because apparently, as a child, he used to tell his parents he wanted to be King of the World. Yeah, I do feel that he wanted to be Prime Minister. I didn't. Mm. I didn't feel that that was an ambition. But now he's got it. Um, I don't think it's stacking up to what he thought. Ah, okay. Which is pretty Parsian, isn't it? Really? Huh. Yeah. I don't know. I just think it is because, you know, I've got to, um, I just sort of think sometimes um, what you think is a good thing, it doesn't always turn out that way. Yeah. And certainly, so yeah, certainly moon Pisces, particularly men, can be unrealistic. Yes. About what's exactly. going on and they can misjudge situations. Correct. They can misjudge uh, misjudge their environment. Yeah. Mm. Well, there you go. That's what I was told just then, that he doesn't pick his sidekicks, his mm. support system, his support team very well. Mm. I think mm. trusts the wrong people. and then yeah, they're, they're gullible. Moon Pisces in business, as a businessman is gullibility yeah so they will trust too easily yes they will trust their business partners and colleagues that they'll do the right thing so they get done over well that would fit betray and, yeah that's what i feel and i feel there's some disillusionment coming into mm -hmm. his heart or his mind and um but i think after politics he will do very well whether it's in business or being an ambassador of some kind um for england uh yeah i do the, feel it will. the moon pisces uh people who become famous can go both ways they either become very sensitive and disillusioned and uh betrayed or insulted easily or they become complete lunatics and go the other way and develop giant egos to cover up their sensitivity right now, Interestingly, Jennifer, we were going to talk about another person in politics and we mm. changed our minds. We were going to talk about Kanye West. Yes, we were. And we changed our minds and Kanye West is a moon Pisces as well and he's currently lost his mind. Yes. He's currently very, very mental, mentally ill but, mm. and he has all that bravado. Yes. All that That's bravado right. and That's I think he might be Leo rising to cover up that sensitivity but... Boris may not have that big cover up. He may just be a sensitive soul. Oh, I think he does cover it up publicly. Mm, but privately, to. I think he's a different man. Yeah. So yeah, there must be right. something in his personality, which I think you're going to talk about in a minute, that would um, perhaps bring about a more confident Boris mm. uh, that hides that that insecurity or sensitivity or I'm not sure what should I do underneath. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. So, um, but it's certainly an ambition. I'm being told that he wanted and he's achieved it, right? And I feel it was meant to be 
Mm. Um, and, but once it's done, it will be done for him, I think. Mm. 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 So that's well, all I've got to say. Okay. Well, he is, of course, a son Gemini, oh. just like Donald Trump. Now, Gemini oh. does, isn't necessarily the, the, the traditional choice of leaders. No. But it is the choice of... Uh, leadership where there needs to be media involvement. Oh. So what Donald Trump and Boris have in common is they both come from a background of writing and media and they're very good with the spoken word. Whether you like what comes out doesn't matter, but they're both very good with words. You know, they're oh. both very good at using the media. They've both it's written been... books. They're both going to continue to write books. And that's the Gemini thing. I didn't even know Boris had written a book. He's already written a book. So you're oh. right there. So Boris it's is a coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boris is a journalist and oh. Gemini rules journalism. So he, he's not a lawyer. No. So commonly in our political system, you're mostly a lawyer, but sometimes journalists as well. I didn't know that. Because yeah. I absolutely know nothing about him other than he got yeah. sick and had this baby. And I purposely, when we decided to talk about him, I purposely didn't look at anything. And I've only just looked at his photo now. So I had no idea he'd already written a book. Mm, there and you I know go. there's another one coming after politics. That would yeah. be interesting. Yeah. Mm. So he was a journalist and at university, he was the editor of uh, the, the university journal. So he started writing articles at university and started being published at that point. And then he went on to um, work in journalism and he became quite political with his articles. And then he became a uh, secretary. What do they call it in England? I can't remember. Some sort of secretarial position. That's Gemini. Gemini's rules, secretarial and administration. So he's very Gemini in that way. He's also got Mercury conjunct his son. Mercury is a Gemini planet. Yeah. So he's very, very Mercury when he's out and about working, doing his thing. Well, he's very, very, he'd be very sociable then, wouldn't he? Very sociable. Because I felt he was very sociable. Very gregarious. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you've got that configuration, this ultra Gemini, and he actually has a few planets in Gemini, um, when you're that Gemini, you're very good at speaking, reading, writing. You're very good at using media, using social media. Yeah. Um, and you also have the gift of the gab. So you have this ability to think on your feet, to think quickly, and we, we all need that now that, that, you know, we've got cameras on us all the time. Um, so very, very good speaker. And that's so important. Remember, you know, in the days of Winston Churchill, you didn't really have to speak too much. No. You just sort of had to speak occasionally, but now you've pretty much got to speak every day. Yeah. So it. this is the time to be a Gemini leader. Um, the other thing about him is that Gemini rules comedy and oh. theatrics and, and quick wittedness. Yes. And he, him having his son conjunct Mercury in, in Gemini makes him extremely far, fast in thinking. Yeah. A quick very intelligent person. And it makes you very funny. It yeah. makes you a joker. There you and go. I, I'm married to one of these people and I wake up every morning to a joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's son conjunct Mercury. And, you know, it's I could a laugh think a minute in my household. <laughs> I could think um, of worse things. <laughs> I know. So I expect Boris is like that too. Very quick, yeah. good, telling jokes, telling stories. Yep. That's very, what I feel. Yep. Being very animated. Very funny. Being, being a comedian. Yep. But of course, you're right. Underneath that moon is the moon Pisces. He's a very sensitive being. Um, so he has to be very careful not to get wounded. Oh, yeah. But and, he, has uh, been. he has been wounded. Boy, yeah. yeah being wounded and being rejected so mm. if for some reason he's pushed out of office he will take that quite poorly yeah i, I feel like he'll go before that happens that's interesting prematurely mm. Mm. okay so I was what gonna, about the uk let's, have let's talk, talk about, about the uk mm. now the uk was born in 1066 we say in astrology which is when william the conqueror took over 
Uh, that's actually Christmas Day. And I'm not too happy with the rising sign of the UK. So let's just say uh, Christmas Day 1066, uh, the UK is the sign of Capricorn. Now, the only other Capricorn nation that I know of is Saudi Arabia. Now, mm. what they have both in common is traditionalism and conservatism. Yes, that's true. And that's true. History. True. History is very important for Capricorn nations. They all respect their history. Now, England's got an unlimited amount of historical programs on TV yeah. if you watch yeah, here. Yeah, You've yeah. got to preserve everything, don't you? You've got and to they have the, have the royal family. The royal They're family. They're never going to let them go. No. They'll never let go of the royal family because royal family is, um, is governed in astrology by Capricorn. So they are going to hang on to their traditions. So yeah. here we have Boris Johnson's come in at a really interesting time. He, he is not a traditionalist, even though he calls himself a conservative. And he's come in at an interesting point in the UK's history. Now, back in 2016, 17, 18, the UK had a very powerful planetary configuration. So every country has a Mercury. And last time I was talking about Australia's got a Mercury. Yep. And the UK's got Mercury in Capricorn, which means mm. they've got very strong systems and boundaries in place when it comes to their policies. Now, when Pluto goes on top of Mercury in a country, it means that there's going to be deep and fundamental changes around the area of Mercury, which is communication, transport, borders, liaisons with other countries. Um, it's going to be the media and all sorts of things. So, of course, when Pluto hit Mercury in 2016 with the beginning of the Brexit issue. Then it went through 2017 and 18. It was a very slow process. Pluto digs very deep and it's actually right. quite painful. And it was it sort was. of like for England, it was sort of like an operation of it extraction. <laughs> to extract. had Theresa May involved in it, didn't they? And it never got so in there. Mm. We had all these political surgeons doing what Pluto does, which is dig in deep and extract something uh, to, cre to create this sort of liberation, but it's never going to be easy with Pluto. So that was 16, 17, 18. And, of course, in 19, we had all the decisions that had to be made so in 2019, we had Saturn on Mercury and Saturn is the great ending, okay? It's the decision time. So in 2019, Saturn was on Mercury and Saturn saying, right, decisions have to be made. Hard decisions have to be made and we have to cut ties. That's what Saturn's about. Saturn rules death. So it was death to the, the, um, the EU at that time. Yeah. Okay. Now, of course, Mercury rules negotiations and decisions. And, of course, we had a lot of failed negotiations at that time. And then there was the opportunity to get a new prime minister. And that is when Boris came in at that time where Saturn was conjunct Mercury. Yeah. Now, because so many negotiations had to occur and there were so many arguments, which is a Mercury thing, because yeah. there were so many arguments and we had to negotiate something, I think a master negotiator had to come in and that was Boris because he's very good with language. Yeah, he's he very is. good at negotiating, speaking, yeah. analysing and probably Trump yeah. Theresa May in that way yeah. because something had to happen and ending had to, had to happen and he came along and said, I'm going to do it no matter what. Yep. So we had... We had the decision-making time, the crunch came 2019, and then in the beginning of 2020, it actually happened. Now, what was going on in the UK chart then? We had Saturn on Venus at that point because the UK has got all these planets in Capricorn and we've had all these planets in Capricorn hitting those planets. So there's been a lot That's going on. True, for yeah. And so when Saturn hits your Venus, if you're a human, it's a divorce transit, right? So when I see it, and you've seen me say it before, I really think you're splitting up with your partner and yeah. it happens. 
So England has had this year, 2020, a divorce transit. Right. Okay. Because they haven't um, settled with the Brexit yet, have they? They have. It was in January. So this is the aftermath now. They're still negotiating. Well, there's a lot, there's a lot involved, I think, Mm. but the actual separation happened uh, late January, January. Well, what have I written? It doesn't matter the date, but yeah. 29th. Okay. All right. So they've actually, I know they've made the decision, but I've, so like a divorce, they're still sorting out who gets what. There's all the aftermath (laughs) of a divorce. It's painful. Um, everybody's sore, there's misery, there's yeah. grief, you know, it didn't, it, you know, I know Scotland didn't want to do it, Northern yeah. Ireland didn't want to do it, so everybody's yeah. suffering after the divorce. Yeah. So this is really a grieving time and, and during a divorce, uh, we, it's cutting ties with people and Venus is a very sociable sign, so it's about compatibility with other people, yeah. so we've cut off not going to play ball anymore yeah so that's that's what's been happening this year to england the aftermath of the great divorce and the good news is that jupiter is coming along very soon to sit on venus so i think england's going to have a good recovery at the end of the year and i've said that about australia next year but i think i think england's going to experience um a temporary expansion at the end of the year and it will be quite good. So I feel a bit optimistic that all is not lost with the UK. I think that there's, there's an expansion in the economy coming, coming. And I said this about Australia too, there's a lot of similarities here in Australia. It's like the post-war era right. they're going into. So I think for England, all the worst is over. Same with Australia, the worst is over and, and now we're gonna see a recovery. So do you think like Australia, you said about Australia that uh, there'll be a lot of um, revelations or revealing of things that people didn't know? No, no, I think it's it's, it's all over now for England. They've they've rooted out all their disease. Okay. It's all done now. Okay. Just about what you do after the divorce. You just pick up the pieces and create a new life. Yep. But I don't think it's going to be as monumental as what's coming for Australia. Australia's got some big changes yeah. in January. And then the UK have done all that. Yeah. Yeah. No, we've got some hard times to come yet. Mm, I think um, Boris was the, the, you know, the surgeon that comes in at the end of the operation who's a specialist yeah. in that area and says, okay, I will do that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he's certainly done that, hasn't he? Although yeah. um, a lot of people say he hasn't done very well, but I, I don't think he's any worse than anybody else, better than some. Well, it did happen. It mm, did it happen. Did. He got in and it did happen. And it, like you, I don't know a lot about the subject, but looking at the chart, the job's done. So do you think uh, Scotland and Ireland will, do you think Scotland will stay? Do I think, think all the boundaries have been put in place now and they'll stay. I'll stay. So all of the decisions around boundaries and borders and alliances, it's all finished. There'll be no changes now. That'll be done. Wow. So good news for England then? I think good news in that, you know, it's all passed now. The painful process is finished. So the birth is done or the divorce is done and now we just, they've just got to get on with the new birth of the new nation really. Yeah. And much like Australia, I don't think all of this has really been about health for them. Right. I know they've suffered through COVID, but I think, oh, look, it's a little bit like um, what happened with the borders and the shutting down due to COVID really sealed the, the final process. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. we had a lot of decisions around borders with the, Brexit thing, shutting down borders and yeah. controlling our boundaries. And I think the COVID thing has just cemented that even more. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. Wow. Well, that's great news. So they've just got to get through what the the tail end of it, really. Yeah. And, and like do. all divorces, they've got to settle into a new home and have new things and new rules and all that sort of stuff. That's new, right. New behaviour. 
No one's going back. There's no reconciliation oh. now. Job done. Wow. Wow. Well, that's so interesting. Well, that would be good news for the UK people, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, and it's interesting what you say. If Boris leaves, how many years do they have in office? I think it's the same as here, isn't it? Is it the oh. same as here? So if he left prematurely, <coughs> his purpose was simply to, you know, activate that divorce. Mm. So there you go, Jennifer. Yeah. Let's, um, let's meet again next Friday and we'll pick another topic. Okay, okay. we'll see you later. Have a good week. Okay. Bye.